Hello ladies and gentlemen, Panzer here and welcome to Akaratus or Akaratus? Not exactly sure how to say this one, but this is a steampunk mech combat game which, if you know anything about me, that is right up my alley. And I've had a quick look at this, I haven't really looked into it too much. It's in early access right now, which you can see right here at the bottom of the screen. Uh, but it does have a couple of technical issues that I haven't really been ironed out yet. For one thing, at this point in time there is no campaign yet. Uh, that I've been told is coming, but apparently multiplayer and skirmish is working. But we're going to take a look at the skirmish mode for now. So we can uh, have a look at what this game is all about. Now there are going to be randomized maps as far as I know, but I don't know if that's happening yet. Some of these look like maps from the campaign, so some of them are probably not suitable for playing a skirmish map, uh, or skirmish mode rather. Let's see, uh, we're going to go with this one because I think this I've played this before and this is the easiest way to show uh, what this game really is all about. So before we get into that, I'm going to click this icon here. There is no tutorial, so I had to figure this out all on my own. And we're going to get rid of all of this. All of this. So right here, this is, by the way, this is the... These are just portraits, I believe, of different characters that will probably be in the campaign. And these are different classes of commanders that you can choose. So, the different commanders have different uh, stats, so some give additional bonuses to your troops, some give additional command points, and so on. And uh, that will, of course, affect how you play the game. I'm playing as a pawn right now, I believe. But I can actually switch that up to, let's go with a brawler. Yeah, that's kind of what we like to see there. Uh, Alright, so. Let's get into this. So, uh, I'm going to scrap all of these and show you. Oh, I don't actually have to scrap all of them, actually. Um, show you the customization. So, all of these units are actually built completely from the ground up. Like, I'll just show you some of these here uh, for your actual army. These are all built completely from the ground up, and you can see the stats here will be affected, so even their hit points, like for example this trooper here does not have as much hit points as the attack one that I've made, uh, and the gunship over here is a little bit different again, and they all perform different functions. So we're going to create one here, you start off with a core, we've got a new one that's been recently added, have a look at that. Um, in fact, let's build one with this new Valyrian Knight Core. So this forms the torso of the mech. Right, so let's click next. And we have a couple of different legs to choose from here. So they all perform in slightly different ways. The Vitruvian legs will actually mount on the side of the mech, where the arm slots typically are. Uh, didn't mean to do that. And the stomper legs, as well as the northerner legs, will attach to the bottom. Now, they all have different stats, completely different stats, and that's what we need to look at. So, the core already gives us 15 life, and that equates to 10 hit points right here. And it also affects its cost. Now, cost is going to be a thing that I will talk about after this, because that uh, affects the army as a whole and not the individual units. Okay, so this will give us 30% less life, 7% damage resistance, and 50% less damage. So this is more of a, I guess, tanky sort of unit, but then it has less life. That's a bit strange. But it has damage resistance and counterattack, so it's more maybe for a retaliation. It's something that's supposed to be hit first and then hit back. Uh, and it has a trait which allows it to face the nearest enemy automatically, and that does affect things, I've noticed, because you do take more damage if they attack you from the sides or from the rear. Alright, so let's put some legs on. So, we already have reduced damage, so 40% increase might not affect us too much, but let's get some of that life back by putting these legs on. So we've got these northerner legs here, which attach to the bottom, and that leaves us with the arm slots to attach weapons or equipment. Now, I say weapons or equipment because none of this is categorized yet, unfortunately. And this particular core does not have any additional slots, so we only have the right and left. So we have to be very, very careful with what we actually choose. Now, I want to probably make something that is melee. And uh, that will allow us to make the most use out of our commander ability as well. So we can have a look at what we've got here. So 
The Blade of the Gods uh, allows us to have a melee counter-attack, which is what we need. We need something that is able to counter-attack. And I believe most of them, most of the melee weapons do have that. So we could go with an Imperial Longsword on here. It does 7 out of 17 damage. And we can put that on the right arm there. So you can see there we've got that on the right arm. And if we want to, we can have a shield, which will give us uh, infinite counterattacks. This actually seems like the best possible build that we can have here. So, basically, anytime this unit is hit, it will strike back, and it will continue doing that any number of times. Whereas, usually, only units, have, I believe, have one counterattack, and it's a melee only. Um, although, in some cases, I've seen ranged units counterattack, and it's still not really clear as to what does what. So, let's just call this the Knight. And let's save that. Now we're going to make sl something slightly different. So we can show you another aspect of the customization. Uh, we'll go with a Northern Accord. That gives us quite a number of slots. And we'll go with a Northern Legs as well. So we've got slots at the front, back, left and right. So we can actually equip quite a number of things. But you can't have more than one uh, in terms of the actual... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Propulsion. Yes, you can't have more than one. So if I was to take this propeller on, I can't actually do that. It's incompatible. It's not going to let me do that. Uh, but I can try maybe to put this one on, and that goes on the back there. But I can't then go and put legs on. It'll cancel that out. So there we go. Right, so we have a few things that we could do with this one. Uh... If we want to make a rogue unit, we can increase backstab damage with a gearbox, which you can put on any of these slots here. Uh, I believe what we might want to do is maybe make this this is a, sort of a powered fist type thing, and maybe we'll oh we could put that there, so that will allow us to hook units towards us. That's a new one that I've not seen yet. This, this game is still being updated, so we still have, like, more parts coming in, and of course the combinations really will just be limitless at that point when they start adding more and more of these things. So... I... We could... I'm not sure what else we could actually put on that one. Increase projectiles, that doesn't really affect us so much. I think what we could do is... We could put another set of fists on. And the reason is, each one will do two strikes. So that's six or seven damage, and that will increase the damage again. When you actually do attacks, uh, it's classed as melee or ranged only. So when you attack with melee, it uses all of its melee weapons. And when you use range, it uses all of its ranged weapons. So that is something to bear in mind. So we've got one more slot. We can actually put something on. We can leave it empty if we want to keep costs down. But this is going to be sort of our uh, top tier unit. So we're going to want to, I guess, put something else onto another slot. Now we can't put weapons onto the back slot, but we can put a piece of equipment that might be useful. We can put a doom horn on the back, and that will give us critical chance of crit damage. Or we could go with... What's someone else we can put on here? We could put a pressure controller, that will increase crit damage and movement range. Uh, not sure we'll need that, I mean we're pulling enemies towards us, so we could go with instead... Uh, hmm increase damage resistance, or we could go with thrust capacitor, which will increase, will not allow them to, I think we could go with that. It Basically, it allows us to attack a unit without any fear of any counter-attack. So let's go with that, and we'll call this the slugger, because I'm not imaginative in any way. Right, so we've got a bunch of units here now, and we can start building our army. Now, at this point in time, we don't have all the slots unlocked. I assume uh, when you level up as you go, you'll have more of these available. So, how we build our army is there are these slots here. So, all of these are balanced. And the different commander types, I believe, give us different slots. For example, the ranger here gives us a bunch of tier 8 slots, but there's only three of them. Guardian has a bunch of 6 right here. The brawler has the same, and the knight has a bunch more. So, actually, we could go with the knight instead. And um, let's just say... Uh, we're going to build our army here. So each 
And symbol down here corresponds to an actual priority. So when we put one in the 5, for example, we get 6 of these units. If we put it in the 6 here, we get 7. So that shows you the sort of resource distribution. So, of course, if we wanted to play a range type character, we could go with more of those. Uh, we can also just put more in those slots. So what this will actually do is, if you think back to games like Heroes of Might and Magic and the similar games, these are actually stacks of units. So on the battlefield, they will be re represented as one whole unit as part of the army, and we move them as one. But they're actually stacks here, so we could actually just fill it up with these if we really want to. But they don't have as many units in a single stack, so that might not be too useful. We could have two of these, and then we could split it up to these. Now you can see that these are lower cost units right here. So these cost 48, and these cost 15. So because it costs 15 only, we get 50 of those if we put that in there. So they can be quite powerful. And uh, let's go with a bunch of troopers as well. We've got 46 of those. And these will be our sort of frontline cannon fodder. And uh, let's... Let's go with something that... Ah, oh, the Bolt Slinger. The Bolt Slinger might be quite good. So this is a sort of artillery unit that has a catapult and a couple of crossbows. So that's our range unit right there. <clears throat> and lastly, right here we have cards. Now cards work like spells in uh, Heroes of Might and Magic. So right here we've got Guard, Haste, Strength, Retaliation and all these. These are all simple spells and I assume there will be more added to them. And uh, we could even have a taunt, actually, which could be quite useful. So we could just simply drop one of these if we can. Or we can just add it to our list. I think we could just add an infinite number of these, actually. Uh, which I don't want to do. So let's clear all of that and pick a bunch of these. So we could go with Berserk. Berserk sounds like it's a good one. Dash as well. Uh... You go with uh, Overwatch as well. Pierce, not so useful. And. We could go with Retaliation. Slow is a good one as well. And let's go with Taunts. And Weakness, because why not? So these are all spells that we can cast once we're on the battlefield, and they take up command points, which are these that you see right here. There's a little bit of, like, the power creep thing that happens in Hearthstone. Uh, every turn you get more command points allocated to you, so that's what you, it means there by command points growth. So what this character has is a total command point limit of 10, so if we have any spells that cost more than 10, we would not be able to use them, of course. And we start off with 4, so immediately we could even use Berserk and Dash straight off the bat, and then we gain 2 additional points per turn. And I've actually just noticed that the Knight is actually very suitable for what we have here, because our unit over here has a increase in counter-attack damage, 100% in fact. So that combined with the 30% counter-attack means we have 130%. There, some RPG numbers for you. So that's our army built, and this is the level we're going to. And we can set a certain difficulty for the enemy, so uh, we could go with less spawns. We can go with the same spawns and no cards, so we can show you that. Oh no, we can actually go with the tougher one and they will start using cards as well. Right, let's begin. Right, here we are. So we have a countdown timer of 60 seconds. It's not going to give me much time to react, actually. I should probably have increased that. But we have a sort of XCOM-style movement system here. So we have two actions per turn, indicated by the green lights there. And we can select any of these to move at any point in time. So I'm going to move our sluggers forward. And they get one additional move. Or we could try and pull one of these, actually. I wonder if we can. No, it's still a little bit out of range. So we're going to do that. And we have to completely move all of our units in that 60 seconds, which can make this game a little bit tricky to play if you're not used to turn-based tactics. So, of course, it follows this grid-style system that you're seeing right here. I'm going to move these guys around. And I believe that is all we're going to do for now. We're going to save our cards for now. As you can see, we've only got three of them because 
you draw a card every every turn. So just because you put some powerful cards in your hands does not mean that you get it immediately. And here we go. We've got a weakness card as well. So the more of the cards that you put in your hand, the likelihood, higher likelihood it is that you will draw them out. Right, so here we can actually already perform a ranged attack. Uh, so we're going to select our ranged unit. And we can click and hold to do an artillery attack or do a shot. Now, I think this shot might be the better option. So we'll fire both our crossbow bolts there. And that's our attack. And I think we're going to let them wait there for a little bit and put them on a... We can actually put them on Overwatch. And you are going to go over here and attack them. Oh, they resisted the pull. Alright, so we'll move into melee range then. And you are going to go over there. Let's try and get as close to them as possible, if we can. And I'm going to move our units over as well. So, of course, the heavier a unit is, the slower it is to move. So, that's another thing to bear in mind. Oh, they've got a very powerful weapon there. In fact, that's the broadsider cannon there, which has an area effect and a knockback. Right, so that's the counterattack there that just went off. Let's attack them. So, simple click to attack there. And let's move you over to attack. And I believe we might have actually just boxed ourselves in. There we go. So, you can see both of these fists attack twice. So, that's four impacts there. Now, there are also different damage types and all of that. But that's a little bit complicated to explain. But just know that different damage types will, of course, affect different units differently depending on their armor composition and damage resistance, which isn't fully fleshed out yet, but that's something to bear in mind that that, that is going to be happening, that there might be a lot of depth in this game in future, which is definitely something to look forward to. Alright, so let's go sword attack there. And I think we're going to end our turn here because there's not much else we can really do yet. Now, I do believe we have lost our knights there. Yeah, that definitely looks like it. We have lost our knights completely, unfortunately. So, that is not so good. Now, artillery in this game works very similarly to how it did in Heroes, when you have control over an artillery unit. It's sort of semi-random in a way. You can choose to attack a unit, but it's really going to attack in, a, in an area around it. So, not exactly... What you might expect, but there we go. We pulled them towards us, and we're going to send these guys to go and attack them. Uh, that's not entirely what I intended to do, but that seems to have happened. That is a thing that's happened. They're now intersecting with each other. That's a bit of a strange bug, which is a bit unfortunate. That does happen. I guess this is uh, something that hasn't been completely tested yet. I wonder how that's going to work now. All right, so they've moved away. But it's still a bit of a strange bug to have units overlapping like that, but there we go. That's not normally something that happens. Right, so we're going to go over here and attack them. And they've managed to dodge out of the way of it, which is a bit unfortunate, but let's go and melee them. And they've dodged out of the way of that as well, which is an effect of one of their cards. Uh, so it's something we've got to kind of deal with now. I think we can... Let's go for these guys, because we've got a clear line of sight on them, because this one is sort of blocked by this wall over here, so we can't really attack them if we wanted to. Oh, the knights are actually still alive. I think it was our troopers that died earlier. Also, not so good, but there we go. So, that's really how the game is played. It's a uh, turn-based tactics game, but the fact that you can build your armies in that way means you have a lot of different possibilities. You can go all melee if you really want to. Oh, the no, knights are dead. Or you can go all uh, ranged if you want to as well. It's entirely up to you. 
So you can actually see right here, when it says the damage number, it also shows you the number of units you can kill. So in this case, they've only got two left. We can actually eliminate that entire stack. But we have to walk through an overwatch for that, which I did not pay heed to, unfortunately. Uh, I think that's... We can knock out 21 of those, if we're lucky. Be lucky? Eh, not so good. Oh, they've got a chance to counter-attack there, and they've died. So, um, got a chance of winning there. So, our uh, air units, uh, I'm not entirely sure how they really work. I've been trying to figure it out. They can't really fly over obstacles as I thought they might have been able to. Um, but they do seem to have a little bit more movement range in most cases compared to legs, which is a bit different. I suppose. That's the only real way to describe that. I'm not sure what else to say about that. But I suppose once the game's a little bit more fleshed out, there will be more to do with that sort of thing. And there goes the game. And that's the match over. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This is Akaratus. If you're a fan of tactics games, I mean, I am. I sank countless hours into Heroes of Might and Magic 3, and I probably still would if, uh, if I could get a group together that had several days to play it. It is a game that takes a very long time to play. So I'm glad that this has come along because this is a very quick and, e quick and brutal uh, kind of tactics game. And I'm loving the art style. Steampunk is always a great love of mine. And the fact that we can build this. I mean, this is like Robot Wars levels of building. I mean, let's just demonstrate one here again. Just, just take uh, a bunch of legs. I don't think we can even go with the crab legs. Which have, bizarrely, uh, a, a trait called Bishop Walk. Which allows them additional movement in diagonals. So that could be useful. You never know. And we could just take that and put a blast cannon on the bottom of it. The left slot is still open there, but it actually doesn't allow you to put anything because the other leg is on there. So I could try to put one on there and it just won't go. But yeah, that that's, that's a unit. That is a viable unit. We could use that. We could even switch that out with a crossbow if we wanted to. That's something that we can do. Or we can, if we really want to, put a... The Blade of the Gods, which is really just a circular saw on an arm. We can do that. It's a very bizarre looking creature indeed. And we can we can do that. That is a perfectly viable machine. We can even make a flying unit by simply putting these together. A melee flying unit. Because why not? You know, we can take that off and put a sword on either hand if we want to. Or, if you really want to, a shield in either hand. You have no attacks, but, uh... That's something you can do, so... Um... There's just so many possibilities with that. I mean, we can even just put lots of guns on this. Let's just see if we can put... No, we can't put one there. Um... Yeah, we can put a bunch of cannons on it if we want to. I mean, the, all of these are possible. They might not be the most optimal build, but it's definitely something you can do. And the possibilities can be limitless. All they have to really do is just keep adding more parts to it. And it's something I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on because it definitely is... Well, it has already caught my eye. So, I, I don't know, I'm just rambling here because there isn't much else to really talk about, but I really wanted to, to get uh, this a video on this game done because it just popped up on Steam and it's, it's one of the more interesting titles to me in a long time when it comes to early access games. And it's not, so, early access is not something I cover very frequently. Oh, that's buggy. So... I do want to try and get 
exposure for the indie developers that are really put out very interesting games, and this is just one of them. It's that old Heroes of Might and Magic, in fact, Might and Magic 3, the Heroes 3 combat formula, combined with this lovely building system that is, even without a tutorial, pretty simple and easy to use. I mean, it's a little bit of trial and error at the moment, but you'll get it eventually. And you can come up with all sorts of different units after that. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This is Panzer taking a look at Akaratus. It's now available on Steam Early Access for about $25 at the moment. It's a little bit pricey, but if you're interested in it, it's definitely one to keep an eye out on. Or keep an eye on. And thank you very much for watching. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, don't forget to leave them down in the comments. And I'll see you next time.